Hey gang, so another one of those tricks that uh, in going back and looking back through what I've done tutorials on, I'm actually kind of surprised that I've never directly done a tutorial on it because it's one of my favorite moves of all time. This is Cat vs. Pendulum, and uh, for those of you guys who have taken my Sticky Hybrids class in the past couple years, you'll know that this move is uh, kind of a cornerstone of it and a place that I get to a lot of other anti-brids from, including Tricatcher vs. Static, or extension versus static, for example. Um, also, cat eye versus pendulum or isolation. There's a whole bunch of different things that all come out of this pattern. Uh, so I usually think of it as being a very core anti-brid pattern and one that I try to make sure that uh, anybody who comes and takes an anti-brid class from me uh, knows how to do by the time they leave. So let's dive in and see how it is actually done. Uh, first and foremost, this is uh, kind of my crash instruction on how to get down a downwards pointed cap, which is that um, you're essentially going to bring the poi far over to the left-hand side of your body, turning clockwise. And what you're going to do is you're going to drop it down your center line uh, and then bring your hand out to the right-hand side of your body. After you do that, um, you should still have the poi going in a clockwise direction. And as it comes around the underside of your hand, your hand and poi are both going to race back over to the left-hand side of your your body. Uh, you're going to try and make sure that the poi doesn't come above your hand until you get all the way over to the left. So the sequence here is that we dip down center line going from left to right and we drag the poi underneath the hand going from right to left. We dip and we drag. We dip and we drag. We dip and we drag. You want to do this in such a way that you count no more than two downbeats as you're going back and forth. There's the one downbeat on that uh, point when you're dropping it down your center line, and then the next point at which the poi is going under your hand is the point at which you're dragging it back across to the left-hand side of your body, like so. Another way you can think of this is almost as though you're drawing something like a heart, where you have one overbeat on your left side, one overbeat on your right side, and then dragging it back underneath, yeah? Either which way, you want to get comfortable enough with this that you can start dropping your hand down both directions. So as the poi head is dropping down towards your center line, your hand is going to drop down with it, about to your hip level, right? As you bring it back around to drag it to your left side, again, the whole thing is going to become one long arc with your hand reaching down towards your hips and the poi traveling underneath it, like so. Now, once you've gotten this far, you have the cap down. It's a question of synchronizing it with your pendulum. Um, now, this can be a little bit of a challenge if you're just starting to work on your pendulums because it's normal for people to start off doing their pendulums a little timidly such that while they're keeping the poi underneath their hand going back and forth, uh, they're also doing it in such a way that um, essentially they never get above a diagonal on either side of their body, right? What you want to do is you want to try and get the poi head up to the same height as your hand on either side of your body, like so. Because once this happens, you're actually going back and forth in the same arc that your hand is traveling as is performing that downward pointed cap, right? And then it just becomes a matter of synchronizing up the pendulum poi with the cap hand. So how do we do that? Um, well, start off with turn both of the poi clockwise uh, and together same time here. And what you're actually going to do is you're going to be turning your upper body over towards your left so that you can kind of keep your left hand poi in between your arms and buzzsaw and your right hand poi further out towards the audience, right? So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to have the right hand reach down and around as this happens and they should both wind up turning clockwise still over here on your left hand side. Uh, once here, it gets a little bit trickier because we're going to have to let the left hand stop turning and switch into a straight pendulum, right? Now, if you want to, you can keep the right hand turning as this happens. Or what you can try and do is the next time that left hand poi, which is doing a pendulum, is pointed out away from you, you can drop the right hand down and bring them back over here to your right hand side. So again, that is they both sweep down and around, and then once you get to the other side, try stopping the left hand and keeping the right hand rotating like this. When that left hand poise away from you, drop the right hand down and bring it back to your uh, right hand side, yeah? Um, eventually you're going to want to get it to the point where you can do that drop around and then dip around. Drop around, dip around. And the first few times you do this, uh, just like my arms are, you're going to find that that relationship between your left hand poise and your right hand is not that terribly close. I'm keeping my left hand closer to my left shoulder right now. This is an okay place to start with, 
But if you really, really, really want to make this move look good, try and dare yourself to get your left hand as close as possible to your right shoulder. The reason for this is, is that usually we have our poi the same length as our arms, right? So if, for example, I have my left hand even with my left shoulder, as I'm going over to the left hand side of my body, it is physically impossible for my right hand to move far enough out that it can maintain that relationship with the left hand poi. Instead, I want to think of that left hand as being almost tacked to my right shoulders and going back and forth. I do still, however, want to keep that relationship going in such a way that when I come over here to my left hand side, uh, I have my body pointed towards the left with my shoulder pointed towards the audience. And in that way, I can keep the left hand poi in between my arms and come back here to that more open place on the right hand side of my body. That's how you can uh, maintain that relationship and not, for example, get your hand and poi uh, kind of tangled as you're going over to the left hand side. Think of it as being that you're going to kind of create a basket as you're going over to the left hand side of your body with your right hand kind of scooping around the left hand poi and, uh, uh, and, and hand. Uh, so let, let me show you that from the other angle so you can see kind of what that would look like on the other side there. So that place right here where I'm kind of creating that cavity between my hand and my body and my left hand poi is going to be hanging out in that cavity, almost like a buzzsaw, right? Um, so yeah, this is one of those moves that it's really, really easy to get the basics down, but uh, getting it to the point where it has that really, really polished look and maintaining that kind of relationship between poi head and hand takes a little bit of work, and it, 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 it can take a little bit of mirror practice too to get that down. So um, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I hope this helps out some of you guys out there who are beginning to get into anti-brids to uh, understand how that relationship can begin to work together. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, have yourselves a great week. Peace. This video right here exists thanks to the wonderful support of these folks right here. They found me at patreon.com slash draxfactorpoi and were kind enough to make a contribution to continue my efforts to create educational flow arts content for people all over the world. If you or someone that you know has learned something from one of the videos that I've put out there, please consider going to patreon.com slash draxfactorpoi or drexfactor.com slash support and making a small contribution to helping me continue this effort, putting out educational videos to people the world over and teaching them about the love of flow arts. Thank you in advance.